All right, welcome to uh, the 2019 Jacktown Summer Show. Uh, the action is kind of quietened down. It's uh, Saturday afternoon. Had a couple people leave. The uh, the band is over there. They're taking a little intermission. So we're gonna explain uh, what we got on display here. So what we, what we're kind of trying to show here uh, is is mainly this. This is a uh, an arc lamp or most of an arc lamp from a projector circa you know 1890 to through 1910 would would be approximately when we estimate this to be from so what we have is a, a brass fixture holding two carbon electrodes and we have a couple of, a couple of hand wheels here mainly this one which uh, it's a, it has a gear which interfaces with these two racks which uh, you can which adjusts the gap for that carbon, those carbon electrodes. Now, when 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 supplied with a with a proper uh, uh, voltage and, and current, you can strike a, an arc between these two carbon electrodes, and it produces quite a brilliant light. Um, this this carbon arc technology was really the first commercial form of electric lighting that was uh, reliable and useful. So. And it, it was actually uh, in service, the, the carbon arc technology, in the uh, you know, high power searchlight, uh, projector, um, you know, rolls, up until uh, uh, perhaps the late 60s, uh, mid 70s really, before this was phased out. And uh, uh, better light sources like halogen and uh, mercury vapor and different arc lighting sources came into play. So that's that, uh, we're powering it with uh, my generator set here, the Bessemer, which uh, many people have seen uh, videos on this. Uh, it's, gonna, it's a good load for this unit. Um, and uh, yeah, so we can start the engine up, uh, get some things adjusted and dialed in, and uh, once it's running, we'll show you how we, have it, how we have it wired up, and we'll go ahead and strike the arc. So we got Voltage turned down, the field's open. We should be ready to start. How many kilowatts is it, Mike? Well, the generator set is rated at three kilowatt, three thousand watt. Hmm. So the the arc lamp draws right around about eighteen hundred watts. So it's a good load for the Bessemer. Uh, it's actually the, the most load that I've had on it. Uh, I was able to uh, get the belt straightened out, so we can actually pull a good load now and make the engine work. Okay. So let's uh, let's go ahead and get it fired up here. Oil. Okay. Oh, you know what? Why don't you explain them with the handle? It doesn't retract, so uh, you might see Mike see Mike grab a oh, hunk of wood or something. It's a good thing you for reminding. Yeah, yeah, it's That's over there. Over yeah, because this here, to put a spring on that would be almost impossible. It'd have to take half this flywheel apart. So, what he, what he, we invented, we, we spent a lot of time on this. Right, right. Uh, Everett and I, Road King and I, collaborated on this device to. Uh, reseat the handle after the engine is already uh, operating. Uh, we'll demonstrate that right. in a second. So you'll know what that is. We've got a handy storage place for it here. So let's go ahead and start the engine. Okay. Yep. All right, let's go ahead and uh, show them the operation. Okay, there you go. So we grasp firmly and the there you go. There you go. Okay. All right, let's go back to this, Mike. Okay. So now that the engine's running, we'll give you a little rundown on what we have. I'm taking power from the generator set, passing it through a 20 amp fuse. Then we're coming up here with this lead wire and this wire. Now this one here is going through this little coil of nichrome wire. This is 18 gauge nichrome wire. Uh, it's a prox this coil here is approximately 4 ohms, 4.1 ohms there, you see. I wound this, all these coils up specifically for this little experiment. Um, some may know it has very, very low resistance once, you, once the arc is struck. And in order to prolong the life of the arcs and make it a little bit more controllable, or sorry, the life of the carbon, make it more controllable, we have to limit that current. 
We're running this on DC power, so limiting the current pretty much means we've got to use some kind of resistance. Now, it's not efficient. It's generating a lot of heat. It's wasting a lot of energy, but it's going to get the job done. Cool. So. Remember, this here's uh, 1900s technology. Right. Before, before light bulbs. I, exactly, before the incandescent bulb, yes. All right, go ahead, buddy. All right, uh, well, I'm going to speed the engine up. Okay. And uh, start making bolts first. To close the field and reduce the field resistance, watch the voltmeter come up. Okay. You can hear the generator whine a little bit. Okay. We're going to speed the engine up. bulbs are loose, we don't want to, we're not lighting these up here. Close our switch. All right, clear. Let me get my, uh, oh. I have a welding helmet on now to adjust the arc. In the old movies, when you used to see the light flicker, that right there is exactly what happened. Somebody wasn't paying attention to the, the arc, the carbon arc. Somebody had the monitor all the time. Sometimes they had automatic ones. They did. Later on, they did uh, produce an automatic feed or automatic feed drive for these carbons. But on the earlier projectors, like this apparatus would have come from, it would have, have had to be done manually. Hmm. That's pretty cool stuff there. Now the arc may seem a bit unstable because we do have a breeze, so it's getting blown around a little bit. Uh, Same thing with stick welding in a very heavy wind. It can be a little difficult. Hmm. Don't look directly at the light, too. Yeah. Uh, oh, you know what? I don't know if anybody noticed this, Mike. This, uh, what is that? A rheostat or something? It is, yeah. It's a very large and early rheostat, which we don't know what exactly it was used for. They, they were really used so in so many control schemes and motor drives early in the day. So we don't know what this exact one came from, but. Just show exactly what's going on there. So, what we have is um, pretty much a big asbestos board with some resistance wire wound through it and taps along that resistance wire in the form of these brass buttons. And pretty much you've got a wiper arm with a brush on the bottom of it, which you can move along the resistance wire to change the resistance value between one end and the tap. So that's what we have here. It's a 60 ohm rheostat rated at three amps. And so you have a, about, you know, one ohm through to 60 ohm thereabouts. You were going to use that on this, weren't you? And then you decided against it? We were initially. We we're, were going, to, going to try to use this rheostat in place of the uh, nichrome resistance wire. However, once we struck the arc and played around with it, right now this is drawing about 10, 11, even 12 amps, depending on what our voltage is. I could speed the engine up to get more amperage through it, but that was way too much. The, the rating on this is 3 amps, and we didn't want to risk damaging it. So that's pretty much, that's really the reason I wound those coils. I didn't want to risk damaging this 100-year-old artifact, really. So, better off damaging a little nichrome wire coil than, than that. That's pretty cool stuff, there. All right. So. I guess that's it, huh? Well, that's it for now. Uh, why don't we come back uh, after the sun goes down and get a better idea of how much light this thing really throws.
if the band ain't playing, because uh, pretty restricted with YouTube, so. Oh, uh, yeah, we don't want to copyright the infringement laws here. Yeah. Yeah. All right, we'll see you guys later. All right. Oh, Mike, I see Rob coming up the road. We ought to get him in there. Maybe he knows a little bit more about this uh, oh, projector. Yeah. Hey, Rob. Yo, Rob, come here, buddy. Hey, there's Root King. We're just, uh, me and Mike were just making a video on your uh, oh, cool. projector here. Yeah, this this little, little gadget, something my grandfather had, his uh, passion and hobby and part-time job was running movie theater. I, mean, I spent lots of, lots of movies when I was... I don't know, 10 years old, watching the movie up in the projection booth, so I got a little bit of history of this stuff. So he used to collect these things. And this would have been inside the lamp house, and that would have uh, made the light for the movie, which eh, it's probably a thousand watt-ish. I'm not the expert, Mike's the expert on that, but that's about what you need to show a movie any distance, so. I remember, I think in one of Road King's videos, he showed your grandfather's some of his projectors. Yeah, yeah, I had one up here, up to Jacktown. That one had an electric light in it, but this would have replaced the electric lamp and uh, done kind of the same thing. You know, yeah. Strike the art. Maybe I'll give uh, I'll give Mike a link to that. Okay. That'd be interesting. That's cool. Pretty cool stuff here, Rob. Yeah. Thanks for stopping by, man. No problem. All right. All right, we're able to uh, start this thing up here without the band, and uh, it's about almost curfew time, and Mike is over here. He's going to light it up for you, so go ahead, buddy. All right. Get it started. Get the best we're all wound up. Clear. You know, it doesn't look very impressive looking at the light, but if you look at the area around it, look how bright that is. And then let me let me shine it up into the trees here. Oh hi Tubes. How you doing? Where's he at? Do you, you see it? Oh, we lost the arc. We lost, we lost the arc. Restrike, hang on. Hot restrike. Whoa. Yeah. Don't know how much you guys could see. Yeah, look at Mike's, look at Mike's shadow. Like the, like the Jolly Green Giant. Yeah. Walk over into the middle, Mike. Wow. Is that? Walk, walk a little further forward. There you go. You can do like... The dog or something like yeah. that, you know? We're losing the light! It's flickering. Hang on, look the dog now. Wow. Look at that. Oh, look, it's Road King. Yeah. Road King is Yeah. King. That really looks, that really looks, wow. Urgh. Make sure I don't back up too far, Rob. Yeah, yeah, don't, don't back up into the light. <laughs> oh, look at that, wow. Come into the light. Look how bright that was, you're saying. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Imagine if we had a, a, a lens and a reflector. Oh, man. Yeah, yeah right, that. there's no lens, there's no right, lens or reflector. It's just a single arc. We should try putting that tube over top of it and just set the light straight up and see what that does. All right, yeah. we're gonna try something else and we'll turn these back on. All right. All right, what Rob did here is we got this, uh, what is that, piece of vent tube, Rob? Yeah, stove pipe. Stove pipe. And it's uh, creating a cylindrical, what would you call it? A, I don't cylindr know, a cylindrical cylinder? A cylindrical cylinder. <laughs> it's a round cylinder. And they're gonna, we're going to try to shoot it up straight into the sky and see make a beam. We can see if we can see some on them trees up there. So okay. I'm going to energize the... Uh, so we're going hot. Okay, okay. so we're, we're, we're in circuit now. Mike's going to boost the, the boost the generator up a little. All right, Mike is gonna he's gonna pinch the carbons. All right, I'm gonna turn the light off here. All right, All right. watch your eyes, tubes. Contact. Wrong way. Wrong way. Other wrong way. There we go. Here we go. All right. <laughs> Uh, well, what do we say? To say the least, uh, well, that's pretty good. Yeah, we have a not very impressive. No. Yeah, we have, yeah, we have, all right, all right. It was better, better when we had to, had to dance with the trees. But yeah. this, this, oh, well. is, this is very similar to what would be in a lamp house and, uh, and a movie projector. Even up into into the 1980s, they were still using carbon arc lamp houses. Going. So Stand by. Oh, that's a Hmm. Look at the bugs in there, I bet they're blind. Is this me or can you see like a beam going on? No, I, I see it on a wire, but... Yeah. Maybe from afar you might see it. 
Yeah, you know, it's well, like plane up there. The yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe. If this table were like underneath that tree more, we'd be like blasting right under that tree, but. Huh. Pretty cool. All right. Oh, you can see that. You can see the coil blow. That's the resistor that's on there. Nitro wires. Getting oh yeah. Let's take let's take a look yeah. at these wires. They're. Uh, yeah, that's the whole major resistor. Yeah. You see they're turning a little. Wow. You ought to feel the heat from here. Hey, yeah, you're right. This is not all that. Not terribly hot. You know. Right, we make a noise here. Wow, this thing's really attracting the moths. Yeah. Mm. It's quite the light source. Pretty cool. The lights were also used in lighthouses. A long time ago, that they would have an oh, yeah. engine in it with a generator, DC generator down in the basement, and they'd have a much larger one of these, and they'd have all kinds of glass prisms that would shine the light through and reflect it, and that's how they got the light for the lighthouse. Mm. Oh well. What do you say, Mike? Shut her down? Yeah, we can shut her down. Thanks for watching. All right. Oh my goodness, here we go. All right, so we're back at the uh, carbon arc, and I just noticed something while I wasn't looking at the light. Look at the, I guess you can't really tell, but everybody's uh, shoes. Yeah, look at Bob's shoelaces. They're glowing from the ultraviolet radiation. Right there. Oh, we just lost our arc. All right, restrike. Yeah, I think the socks come out better. Look at that. Oh, look at Rob's socks. They're glowing. Yeah. That's why you don't look directly at the arc. Look at the back of the chair. Glowing. Fascinating. Alright, thanks for watching.